Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, am I audible? Am I audible, everyone? Okay. Uh, Ocha, please give me uh, five minutes, okay? For uh, actually, I forgot to uh, click the photos for this topic, which I am going to start today. I uh, this one uh, deleted that one by mistake and leave. So please give me five minutes, okay? After five, uh, five to six minutes, I will start. Okay.
Okay. Uh, thank you for giving me the time. Okay, I'm still audible, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Okay, so let me share my screen quickly. Okay, so uh, we have uh, discussed about the uh, this uh, skimming uh, the skimming tanks, okay, detritus tanks, all those things we have uh, discussed. So by skimming, you uh, remove these oils and greases from the sewage, right? If you can remember that. So after those processes, your the next treatment that is your sedimentation, okay. So already in the last class also I have discussed with you that what is the necessity of sedimentation or uh, treatment in, in wastewater. It is again I am repeating it. So uh, it is like you know the you when you provide the screens and these uh, grid chambers all those things. So they you know they remove the floating materials like all those uh, uh, the uh, you know that are heavy inorganic saturable solids. So they remove all those things like paper or whether it can be wood or it is a branch of tree. So whatever heavy inorganic saturable solids are there or whatever floating materials are there, these screens and these grid chambers they remove all those things. But, you know, uh, in that sewage, after removing those, um, you know, heavy inorganic settleable solids also, there remains a part of the suspended organic solids, you know, which are uh, either they are not very heavy, okay, so that they can be removed as a floating matter or neither they are very light so that they can be removed by your grid chamber. So that is a, uh, you know, a part of the suspended solid, it remains there you know, where that are neither very heavy or that are neither too light. Okay, so it cannot be removed by your grid chamber also, neither by your screening also. So at that kind of, you know, uh, suspended organic solids, you know, uh, like they can be uh, removed by the process of sedimentation. Okay. So uh, yeah, this uh, uh, the sedimentation tanks, so they are removed. Uh, uh, they can remove the part of this organic matter that is coming from uh, from the grid chambers. Okay. Then and uh, this uh, in the complete this sewage treatment, the sedimentation it is uh, a process. It is carried out twice. Okay, so how, uh, this sedimentation process, it is first, it is once carried out before the uh, this primary sedimentation part and the other that is after the sedi uh, sedimentation uh, biological treatment part. So that is your secondary sedimentation. So it is carried out once before uh, your, um, uh, your before the biological treatment that is your primary sedimentation and next is once after the biological treatment that is the secondary sedimentation. Okay, so now uh, like we have uh, we have some sedimentation tanks. So sedimentation tanks we have already uh, you know like uh, studied in our raw water engineering. So uh, before going to the this sedimentation tank, so sedimentation tank we have rectangular sedimentation tanks we have, okay. So like circular sedimentation tanks we have. So this one we have already discussed in our last uh, module, okay. So I just want to uh, revise it, uh, like showing you what are the uh, components of a sedimentation tank. So uh, these are, you should know the sedimentation, the components, what, what are things are uh, there in a sedimentation tank, okay. So uh, before that, let me, uh, before showing you one video, let me uh, tell you what are the types of the sedimentation tanks that are present. So the types of sedimentation tanks are generally, uh, number one is your intermittent uh, settling tank and the other one is your continuous 
tank. Okay, continuous sedimentation tank, continuous flow type sedimentation tank, and your intermittent settling tank, which is also known as your quiescent type of tanks. So these uh, quiescent type of tanks, what is inter intermittent settling tanks? So they are. Uh, you know, very simple uh, type of tanks uh, which store the sewage for a, uh, you know, some certain period of time, and then it uh, keep it in complete uh, in still position. That is, it, it keeps the sewage in a very uh, in a rest position. Okay, so after you give uh, the rest to this sewage for about you say like twenty four hours, so what happens during uh, that time? The suspended particles that are present in the sewage they settle down to the bottom of the tank, and the cleaner sewage, which the uh, lighter one, the lighter sewage they or a cleaner sewage they, uh, you know, uh, the froth they comes to the they remains at the top, and after that it can be. Uh, you know, you can draw off the uh, cleaner uh, sewage, okay? And after that, the tank, it can be cleaned and the, uh, you know, the settled uh, sewage, it can be cleaned out. So that is your uh, intermittent type, settling type of uh, your sedimentation tank. Then comes your uh, continuous flow type. So here, uh, what is happening is that, you know, it is used in now, nowadays, your continuous flow type of tanks are used and here the, you can reduce the flow velocity and the sewage, it is, uh, it is not brought to, you know, complete steel position or it is not brought to complete rest as it is you know, done in the intermittent type of settling tanks. And the uh, uh, you know, it uh, this working of this continuous flow type of tank, it is, you know, like the water, it uh, enters from one end, then it comes out from the other end. So it is a very simple mechanism type of, you know, uh, it is, uh, uh, sedimentation tank. And here, the main thing is that the velocity, you can reduce it very um, sufficiently, okay, by providing the length of the travel. So here, that means the velocity, it can be adjusted uh, by according to you okay so this is about your continuous flow type so before going to um, uh, the further uh, this one treatment so let me show you first one video which shows you the you know like the different different component parts of your uh, this uh, sedimentation tank And here we have a rectangular sedimentation basin with its influent zone. So the first zone of a rectangular sedimentation basin is the influent zone, and this is where water enters the tank. As the water moves through the tank, it enters the settling zone, and this is where the settling takes place of the particles that will settle out. And at the end of the basin is the effluent zone, and this is where the water leaves the basin. And on the bottom, we have the sludge zone. The sludge zone is where the settled solids collect. So these are the four main zones of a conventional sedimentation basin, whether it's rectangular or circular. The influent zone, the settling zone, the effluent zone, and the sludge zone. And here we can see that there's the sludge collectors moving the sludge to the influent end of this rectangular clarifier for processing. Here we have pictured a round clarifier or a circular clarifier. And the water comes in the influent into the center stilling well. This is the influent zone. The water then leaves the stilling well 
and moves outward through the settling zone. As the settleable particles settle out, they enter the sludge zone down at the bottom of the clarifier, and the outer edges make up the effluent zone. On a circular clarifier, the effluent weir goes around the entire circumference of the clarifier, and that is the effluent zone. Okay, so you have uh, seen this uh, video, just a minute. Okay, so you have seen the video, so you have seen what are the important uh, parts of your, uh, this, uh, you know, like uh, of this sedimentation tank. So that was a very short video actually. Okay, uh, just a second. So, now we have to design the sedimentation tank. So, design part is there. Research has come. Understand the affluent zone. Okay. Uh, Bangia, uh, your affluent zone is, uh, this one is simple. Like from the influent zone, the water is entering. Okay, the sewage water is entering from this influent zone and then the process the mechanism it is happening in the sedimentation tank then this is the effluent part if you can see in this picture this is the effluent part that is the sewage water after you know being treated uh, treated in the sedimentation tank the sewage water it goes out through the effluent part okay so that is your effluent zone okay so uh now we have to do the design parts. Okay, so for designing uh, uh, this one, we have to know certain, uh, you know, uh, these uh, formulas we have to know, okay? Similarly, we have to, like we have done this uh, for your raw water also. So here also we have to know some of the formula. So let me note it first, which are the formulas you have to remember. So first one is your, this formula you have to remember. Okay, if you uh, design a continuous flow type of a sedimentation tank, so this one you have to remember, V is equal to Q by BH. So here V, it is your uniform velocity. Okay, V is your uniform velocity and Q is obviously it is the discharge that is your uh, discharge of the wastewater or the sewage that is entering the, you know, basin or the, uh, the sediment, sedimentation tank and your uh, B is the width of your b is the width of your uh, this basin and the depth of the basin is given by your h okay so this one number one formula you have to remember then then again you have to uh, 
remember just wait okay this is another one uh, formula that you have to remember that is your if the velocity it is you are talking about a settling velocity so settling velocity you have to remember the formula this one q by bl okay so this one is another formula that you have to remember this is in case of the settling velocity okay then comes your okay now we have to remember about the uh, overflow rates okay so here you see uh, this uh, the normal values of the overflow rates is between 40000 to 50000 liters per uh, square meter per day okay that is for your primary plain primary sedimentation tank and if it is, it is between your 50 to 60 liters of your uh, square per meter per day for your sedimentation tanks that is uh, that are using your coagulants okay the, the sedimentation basins or tanks that are using coagulants that will be your 50 to 60 thousand liters per square meter per day then again uh, for your secondary sedimentation tanks the value is about 25,000 to 35,000 liters per square meter per day. So these values we have to uh, remember or you can note it down in your copy for your uh, doing the numericals. Okay. So next is your, uh, you have to remember the effective depth. Okay. The effective depth, the, this depth, effective depth, it is, you know, it is not uh, including the you know the sludge zone okay it is excluding the sludge zone what is the depth that is that ranges from your 2.4 to 3.6 meter that is it it is uh, generally it doesn't exceed 3 meter but the range is your 3 2.4 to your uh, 3.6 meter okay so that is your one value then next is your Next is your, you have to remember the detention time. Detention time you have to remember. So, this is the formula you can see that detention time for your rectangular tank, it is your volume of the tank divided by rate of flow. Okay, so it is your BLH by Q. So, this one formula you have to remember. Then your again detention if in the question it is given for a circular tank since we have two types of tank rectangular and circular sedimentation tank. So if it is given for your circular tank then you have to use this formula. Okay. Then uh, your small d it is your diameter of the tank and capital H is your uh, you know side water depth or you can say vertical depth at the wall. Okay. So now the detention period uh, suppose it is not given to you then uh, you can assume the detention time you know for the sewage sedimentation tank uh, between one to two hours okay between one to two hours you can assume if suppose the detention time is not given to you then comes your then comes your the uh, weight of the uh, tank Okay, the weight of the tank, you can assume it to be 6 meter. If it is not given, you can assume it to be 6 meter and it should not exceed by 7.5 meter or so. Okay, and the length of the tank, sedimentation tank, it is uh, generally not allowed to exceed 4 to 5 times the weight. Okay, so the length it is not allowed to exceed 4 to 5 times of the wheat. Okay. So, L is not allowed to exceed 4 to 5 times of uh, B. Suppose it can be 4 or it can be 5 times of your wheat. So, again, the cross-sectional area of the tank, it is uh, for the horizontal flow velocity, it is 
assumed to be 0.3 meter per minute okay and the uh, diameter if the maximum if we, for a circular tank it is given to you uh, and the diameter or the maximum diameter is not provided to you so you can be, uh, keep it as your 60 meter or so okay so these are all the values that you have to uh, remember while designing a rectangular or circular sedimentation tank okay so coming to a question We will solve one question for your circular uh, sedimentation tank, okay? So for this circular sedimentation tank, it is given in uh, the question, it states as like design a circular settling tank unit for a primary uh, treatment of sewage at 12 million liters per day. Uh, assume suitable values of detention period assuming that trickling filters are to follow the sedimentation tank and surface loading. So now, what is a trickling filter? So that one we will be coming in the next uh, part, okay? After this sedimentation, we will be doing the secondary uh, treatment uh, by biological filtration. That is your treatment, uh, trickling filter will come and we will learn what is a trickling filter in that case, okay? So now, uh, you, uh, till then, we have to uh, design this uh, circular settling tank. So, first of all, uh, here, the detention period is not given to you. So, as we have learned that the detention period, we can assume it to be like one to two hours, we can assume. So, here, they are assuming it to be two hours, okay? So, here, first of all, the detention period, they are assuming it to be two, uh, two hours. So, um, like uh, okay mm. and this uh, surface loading so the surface loading values also just now we have uh, studied that it is between 40 to 50 thousand uh, liters per square meter per day so they are assuming here it to be 40 thousand so if you assume 50 thousand also that is correct it is not wrong okay so they are assuming first the detention period, then they are assuming the surface loading. And after that, they are finding the, the quantity of the sewage that you can treat in the, uh, the two hour time. Okay, that you can treat that uh, in a detention time of your two hours. So uh, 12 million liters per day is given to you. So this 12 million liters, this one is 12 million liters multiplied by your detention time, that is your two hours, they are converting it to your uh, day. So they are, uh, this is your 20, by, divided by 24. So it comes out to be 1 million liters, which they have converted to again meter cube. Uh, this is your 1000 meter cube. So they got the capacity of the tank as your 1000 meter cube. Okay, so uh, now you have to find the, uh, you have to find the diameter of the tank. Okay, you have to find the dia of the tank. So for finding the dia of the tank, obviously we will have, we, uh, we have to know the, what is the surface loading of this tank. So the surface loading formula is uh, given by your Q by surface area of the tank that is discharged by the surface area of the tank will give you the surface loading. So surface area of the tank is obviously pi by 4 d squared. So here after solving all this value because surface loading value we already have, uh, we have assumed it as your 40,000 liters per square meter per day. So it's uh, 40,000 is equal to this Q also we have uh, in the question, it is your 12 million liters. So we have 12 into 10 to the power 6, since it is a million. So 12 into 10 to the power 6 divided by your pi by 4 D squared. So here you find the D, okay? From this equation, you find the D that is your diameter of the tank. So here, uh, after solving the diameter of the tank, they have got it to be 19.6 meter, okay? So after getting the diameter of the tank, now you can 
easily find out what is the effective depth of the tank. So effective depth of the tank, I have told you that it is like excluding the sludge zone. So it is the formula of the effective depth of the tank is your capacity by area of the uh, cross section. So this uh, capacity we have already find out the, what is the quantity of sewage that can be treated per, 20, uh, per 2 hours. So that is your 1000 meter cube. So 1000 meter cube is the capacity here and the area of the section we it is like pi by 4 d squared. So d already diameter of the tank we have got. So you put the value of the diameter of the tank that is your 19.6 meter in this case. So you are getting the effective depth of the tank as your 3.2 meter. Okay. So we you can finally you got the dimensions of the uh, tank that is you use a circular settling tank okay with a 19.6 meter dia and the effective depth of the uh, this uh, tank is your 3.2 meter depth okay and if you want the total uh, the depth of this tank so what you will have to do you will have to add a freeboard so freeboard already we have uh, in our previous uh, questions we have added like 0 0.3 meter or 0 0.45 meter uh, value you can add so that if you add that value then you will get for the extra depth for your uh, tank okay so that is your this, uh, like this your question is being solved okay so uh, let us take a 15 minutes of break. So you again, you people join at 11.15. So we will be doing the next part of the uh, part. Okay, next part of this syllabus we will do. Okay, so let us take a 15 minutes of break. We will join, you join again at 11.15. Okay, okay, so uh, this free board, free board, why it is added? Because, you know, like uh, sometimes we have to, uh, it's not sometimes because a, a tank, it has to be clean. Okay, it has to be cleaned. A person, he needs to go uh, inside the tank and he has to, you know, clean the tank. So for, you know, there should be some gap between the water level and the top of the you know the uh, the uh, the stop of the sedimentation tank because if the, there is no depth and if the uh, so this uh, you know the sedimentation the top of the sedimentation tank it is touching the water because those are made up of concrete isn't it these are concrete based so if it is touching so you know the water it will obviously get dirty and also if there is no space between the water top of the water and between the top of the uh, sedimentation tank so you know if a person goes for cleaning he goes uh, inside the tank for cleaning purpose he needs to you know uh, uh, sometimes he needs to raise his head for you know this uh, oxygen purpose and all so for those reasons you know a freeboard you have to uh, always you have to add a extra depth that is your freeboard understood okay i hope it is clear to you okay okay thank you so uh, you again join uh, you start join at 11:50 okay i am closing this link again to the same link you joined